everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about the virgin whore complex. Have you guys heard about this? Do you know what this is? First off, I would love to take a deep breath with you. So if you're in a space where you can close your eyes, I invite you to close your eyes and settle into your body. And first, we're going to exhale. <sighs> And then breathe in by, while you're expanding your stomach, like pushing your stomach out. So breathe in. All the way up through your chest and through your head. And then let it out. And notice how you feel in your body right now. I'm feeling juicy. I'm feeling activated. <coughs> and also, I'm feeling super curious. Okay, so I want to put in a clarification in the beginning of this podcast, and that's about the virgin and the whore archetype. So I say virgin and whore a lot in this podcast. Like, if you're feeling like a virgin, or if you're worried someone's thinking you're a whore, um, and what I just really want to say that those are archetypes. And so an archetype is... It's like something, a symbol that we have in culture in order for us to be able to, like a model for us, like a role model for us to, or a role model for us to, you know, become or to avoid becoming. And so when I say virgin in this, it's not like you haven't slept with anyone ever in your life. It's more that the perception that you are wanting to uphold within society is to be more pure and, you know, not having slept with that many people. And when I mean whore, it's not that you're sleeping around with everyone and being very loose with your moral um, uh, standards. It's more just the perception that you have in society is you, you are concerned about being the symbol of this like negative or what society has created as a negative sexual symbol. So when I say virgin and whore, just think of it more as a symbol, kind of like an archetype that we are, and this, and archetypes are also helping us with our subconscious because in our subconscious, in our psyche, we look at things in stories and archetypes because they help us to understand things more. And that's okay. It's just the way it is. And when we learn more about this, we can choose whether we prefer, th prefer them or not. So this is the clarification I want to make and excited for you guys to listen more into the episode. So I have been exploring my sexuality since I was basically aware of it, um, but more from a standpoint of teaching these days because I wanted to share with y'all like what I'm going through and I get so many questions on Instagram about like, how are you so empowered in your sexuality? And I'm like, how am I? Like, I just feel like I am this, you know? And I and I love to be soft and to really feel good in my body and drink lots of water, as I'm doing right now. <clears throat> but how do I, how do you get to that point? And I was speaking with my friend, Moni, that you'll see in another podcast. She's also a super empowered a woman and she was bringing up something called the virgin whore complex well it's like what is that so this is the idea that in our reality like as women in today's society there's this par this polarity between being the virgin like within our sexuality so we're talking about like how we're experiencing our sexuality and also how we're perceived by society so there's the virgin. This is <coughs> the the archetype of you know being pure, being innocent, but also within your body actually denying your sexual pleasure because you are choosing to like put up these barriers around yourself. But what are you getting out of that? So you're actually getting the approval of society because society accepts a virgin. And it praises a virgin. It's like, wow, you know, this is something that everyone wants. And then the other side, the other side of that polarity. So that's like the pure white version of sexuality. And then the other side of that is the, the darkness, which is the whore. And this is a woman who's very much enjoying her sexual pleasure and like allowing her body to receive pleasure, 
But in society, traditionally, this is a woman who is not accepted. This is an outcast. And even today in more conservative conservative countries, like Muslim countries, these women are killed, like outright killed f- for being for receiving pleasure in their body. Like that is still the reality that we're living in. And even in less extreme versions within society, you'll notice like like I shared on my sex podcast that I recorded a month ago or so, whenever I recorded it, a little while ago. And I was talking about like how many people I've slept with. And I talked to my boyfriend Faraday about this. And I, I was like, this is so interesting because for me, it's just very normal to talk about like how many uh, like people I've slept with. And most women are like really shy about this because of this virgin horror complex. It's like, if you've like, there's this fear that if, they tell someone they're interested in oh I've slept with x amount of people and if it's like too many people then they are considered a whore and they're no longer accepted within their their reality their culture of the people they care about or they're like viewed as like dirty and I don't know the English word we have is tainted which means like something that is is like damaged you're like quote-unquote damaged goods And I'm like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, how is this the society that we're living in right now? Because I'm over here just like enjoying all the pleasure and just having so much fun. And I thought everyone was doing this. And so this is the download I'm getting today is that there is this virgin whore complex that people, not people, women are so worried about playing out like, you know, like, This I think most of this is subconsciously, and this is also the programming we're raised in with our religions, with our parents, with our culture, society, everything. And then there is, so that's like a lot of this is just fear that is causing this, and so it's causing a lot of inaction, like choosing not to act on sexual pleasure or denying sexual pleasure because they're worried about being perceived as a whore. And because they want to remain, quote unquote, this virgin. And then you end up with like so many situations of people. Like, I just find it so weird that like sex today in a lot of ways, like for most people is let's go have some drinks. Let's have some dinner. Maybe we'll go dancing. And then like no one's talking about anything. And then suddenly you're like taking each other's clothes off and like fumbling around in bed awkwardly like and there's like it's like no conscious communication of like hey i'm interested in you romantically and sexually and physically like how do you feel about that how do you feel in your body it's like no it's like we're gonna act like none of that exists we're gonna let the sexual tension build up and then like someone's gonna finally flip a switch and go for it and then suddenly you're just like jumping on each other because there's so much like tension and suppression that's been built up and needs to be released And that's just weird. I'm like, can we just talk about, like, I find it super sexy to talk about, like, how I'm interested in someone, how I want them, I want to have sex with them, what I want them to do with my body. Like, all of that is foreplay for me and also creates a lot of safety in my body when I'm able to talk about this before it happens. Anyways, we're going back to the virgin whore complex. So I was, like, trying to figure out in my reality why this doesn't necessarily um touch me in the sense that like I don't feel affected by it and then I thought I had this big aha moment this morning where I was like whoa that's because I actually already lived that out so like most people live in fear of these things happening like of becoming the whore or wanting to remain the virgin even if it's like on the surface you know like in their group of friends, in their workplace, in their religion, like in their, you know, within their family, like they're considered this virgin of like, you know, looking good and, and only whatever moral restrictions they're putting on themselves, but they're like upholding those within their, their dynamic of public, but then under, under the covers (laughs) in the sheets, they are doing something else, which is creating a lot of, um, it's creating a lot of split like in our 
personality, within our consciousness, within our body, our connection to our body, our spirituality, our sexuality, like all of these things. It's like compartmentalizing different parts of ourselves. And the thing I learned so much as I was going through my spiritual growth is spiritual growth and growing our consciousness is all about integration. It's all about bringing all parts of ourselves together in a conscious way where we are honoring them and we're accepting them and we're loving all these different parts of ourselves. So whatever is happening out there is not something that I wanted to be part of and I chose not to, but then what did I actually do? Well, I was raised in a very religious uh, environment that was so, so sexually suppressed and, um, it was not allowed to have sex before marriage. And so I literally was the virgin. Like I was a virgin until I turned 18 and then I was married. And like until my wedding day, I was actually a virgin. So I didn't need to like play this out <laughs> in some sort of, you know, like on the surface, I'm a virgin archetype, but then below the surface, I'm not. I li- like, I literally was the virgin <laughs> and then I got married and then I was able to really explore my sexuality in a very free way with my husband. I was married for six years, like within this very religious dynamic where it's like, you're only supposed to have sex with your partner, but I'm very grateful that the person I married also really enjoyed sex and was very open about exploring it. And so together we really went for it and we like had a great sex life together. But then I didn't want to be married anymore. And within my religion, marriage or divorce is not allowed. It's like you are not only married for life, like within the ideology of the religion, you're actually married in the afterlife together, which is like, what? And then, so I wanted to get divorced and I I didn't sleep with someone else like until after I was divorced but within the religion even if you get divorced by like the governmental law like you know I was an American so I was married in the American law and then I divorced within the federal American law even if you're divorced like on paper like by the government within my religion they considered it you're still spiritually married to that person And so even after I was divorced, if I wanted to sleep with someone else, I was still deemed a whore. Even if I like married someone else, I was still deemed a whore. And so eventually I, I, after I got divorced, I stopped like believing in my religion and, and started to really like wake up to the reality, (laughs) the fact that I was like raised in a cult and, you know, do I want to live in this suppression for the rest of my life and I was slowly waking up to this and so eventually I ended up sleeping with someone else like six months after I got divorced and when my religion found out like I still was going to religious meetings because this was also my connection to my family because everyone in my family was in the same cult so when they found out that I slept with someone else they announced from the platform to everyone within the church like you know 160 people you know, Brittany Bond is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is after I had been divorced for six months. And this is because I slept with someone else who wasn't my ex-husband. Yeah, he was like the, I didn't, I slept with someone outside of the spiritual marriage that they had deemed still going on, even though I chose, it's like, I didn't get a choice. Like I was a virgin and then I didn't get a choice. I had to stay with that person forever. And then if I wanted to explore myself and explore my sexual freedom and empowerment, I was deemed a whore. So from a very young age, I didn't have anything to fear anymore. Like, you know, because when you're also when you're announced from the platform, like Brittany Bond is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you are literally kicked out of the church in the sense that like every single person who is a Jehovah's Witness is no longer allowed to speak to you. So back in the day, there's this, there's this really good book. I think that was written in like the 1800s. That's called the Scarlet Letter. And this is the whole thing about the whore. It's like a woman who sleeps with someone. The, the idea behind the book is that a woman who sleeps outside of marriage, she, in if the town found out about it, they would put this scarlet letter on her 
which is basically telling like she had to wear clothing that had the scarlet s which was it's basically saying she's a whore and she's damaged goods and so this is what they were trying to do from the platform and then everyone had to agree with that by not speaking to me anymore so people would walk right by me and act like I didn't exist anymore and this is all because I was trying to explore my sexuality and and be sexually empowered and allow my body to receive pleasure and this was not allowed and when that happens at a very young age when all of your fears come true in the 3d you just kind of like at least this is how it was for me I was just like okay what next like I don't (laughs) like everything I was programmed to believe that could bad could happen like for my program my specific programming within the religious context and moral context that I was raised in came true then it's like you can just I don't know I feel like it's like in a way you see through all of it it's like you go through this dark tunnel and then you come out the other side and you're like oh it's not actually that bad like the world is great and and I think because I was raised in such like a closed I would also say protective environment from a sense of like you know being raised to like value myself and value who I was and have like good boundaries and standards after that when I was going through my sexual exploration I s- I had boundaries for myself. It wasn't like I was this quote unquote whore. I was like just going around and sleeping with everyone. Like I, and I think this is, this is what I want to come to is I don't, I think a lot of people, when they talk about this, like virgin horror complex, they're like, this is this total, this is this really bad thing that, you know, the patriarchy or like man-made society that is ruled by men is creating for us and you know a lot of women just fall into it but it's like when to become conscious of what's going on or if you really face it which is what I felt like I did like I was like I am literally the virgin okay now uh, according to my culture my my religion and my my community I'm considered a whore it's like then you kind of like break through the chains of all of that and then you look around and you get to decide who you want to be and what I found is that I choose to be all of it and so much more like those are just two small parts of myself and like when I'm when you when you stop looking at it in such black and white terms like literally virgin is the white energy whore is the dark black energy and when you integrate all of it together it's just like bursts into this world of color of like dimensions and textures and flavors and different types of pleasure and all of it just can has the opportunity to feel really yummy in your body and I'm bringing this to your attention because I feel like it doesn't need to be so (laughs) literally black and white but also so charged with emotion so we can sit here and be like really angry that the world has created this these these polarities these dynamics of how women are viewed in society or we can look at it from a very neutral standpoint of like well, that's super interesting that culture has decided to explore our ourselves in that way and also at the same time I do not prefer that so when you take the emotional charge out of it you actually take your power back because it's like I'm no longer giving that any of my energy. I'm no longer engaging in that at all. Unless I want to. Unless it's something I actually choose. And 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 then I was thinking about this like when it comes to like role play. So like role play and sex is like when you when you're like, you know, you're pretending like you're someone else and with your partner or whoever you want to do it with. I mean your partner I meant my partner as in my boyfriend, but like anyone who's consenting and it's feeling juicy in your body to make love with. And I was thinking about like some of the major role plays that a lot of my past sexual partners have naturally like, so I'm on this investigative journey, right? And I'm like, what are the major types of role playing that just come up over and over again in sex with partners? And the ones that I have found is 
the virgin and the whore. It's like, oh, you're this little girl who doesn't know anything about sex in the big world. Let me teach you. And I'm like, wow, that, that, that does turn me on. Yes, it does. And then there's this other dynamic of, oh, you're such a naughty girl. You just love sex. And like, I could tell when you were looking at me that you wanted to have sex with me. And mm, I'm just fulfilling your, you wanted this. This is your, dis-. and I'm like, that's the whore. And both of those things really turn me on, but those are not the only things that turn me on. And this is what I want to bring to everyone's attention is it's okay to explore those dynamics and it's okay to allow yourself to receive pleasure from those dynamics. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but can we just please stop being so boring and only go in these black and whites of like, "Mm." and I'm totally general generalizing here, but I also have done some investigative research and I have found like through my own experience and I have found that these are things that always come up like over and over again. I found that partners have, just like these are like go-to role play modes and I'm just like can we have role playing and also just different types of exploring our sexuality but then then I ask how do we get to there so if we're in a society where they're so suppressed and people you know if you're in western society like you know English speaking western society you probably are feeling like you know you have control over your body you know you like you're able to explore your sexuality like in technicality. But then what I've found is there's this whole other dynamic of people not talking about sex and not talking about their sexuality. And then there's this expectation that they're supposed to know how to do things in bed and they're supposed to know how they're supposed, they want to receive pleasure. And we're just like putting so much expectation on ourselves that everything, and, and it's like, Why? Why can't we go, like the other option, this is why I'm bringing this up, is like the other alternative to this is to talk about sex more and allow ourselves to explore our sexuality and figure out more more things that turn us on than just the virgin and the whore, like more dynamics, more, more, more different types of polarity. Because there's so much out there. (laughs) There is so much pleasure to be received. And there's so much like mental, emotional, physical fantasies that we can play out. I mean, this is also why sex is so beautiful is because you're, you're exploring different types of your psyche while, while enjoying physical pleasure in your body. So if you, if you, do it in a certain way you're actually it can be therapy it can be manifesting it can just be fun it can be it's connecting hopefully um to yourself to your partner to the universe it's so much more than just like a physical act and and there's also nothing wrong with it just being a physical act if that's if that's what you're like if you're just feeling juicy and you want to you know make love um but I, I just, I'm bringing this up because I'm like, really, I've been researching in history, like historical um, models of sexual empowerment. And I was like recently looking at some stuff around like Marilyn Monroe, even like she is definitely in, in history looked at as a, like a sex symbol. But when you look at her personal life, and I, I, this is definitely probably because of the, the time period that she lived in, is <clears throat> she, ac- she was not treated very well like by men in her personal life. And, and I'm like, why, why have I always been, like I've, within like sexual dynamics with men, I've always been treated really well. And I think this is, comes back to also the programming that I have with my family, my parents were very good at instilling self-worth in me and like boundaries and boundaries in the sense of like understanding like what, like allowing myself to speak up for what feels good in my body and what doesn't. And I think this is something that a lot of people could use more opportunities with. And this is why even like there's certain tantras that you can explore and different this is why like the world of Tantra is really blowing up right now because Tantra itself is 
is connecting to consciousness in a way it's like moving life force energy through your body. So this does not need to be sexual at all, but a big part of Tantra in, in the moving life force energy through your body, because everything's energy is speaking up for what feels good in your body and therefore allowing it to flow more freely. So like speaking your boundaries, speaking what feels yummy, your desires. And I think that's a really great exploration, but I guess I just wanted to like bring this up and share with you that like it's, It doesn't have to be so black and white and it's totally okay and accepted and supported and honored for us to speak about sex more and to feel empowered in our sexual exploration. Like I, I was talking to Farrah the other day about some girlfriends I have and we are so supportive about speaking about sex with each other. Like we're like celebrating it. We're supporting each other. We're making sure we're all like speaking up for our boundaries and our desires, like, excuse me, in our different relationships. And I realized that like most people are not like that or they could be doing it in a way that is more supportive and celebrative because I still think that there's this programming we have about worried about being considered a virgin or a whore. So if we can just let that go, take the energy out of that, decide that we choose to prefer something else. And this new dynamic that I want to bring in is the empowered man, the empowered woman. Wow. I just want to put a little side note in here that I said, empowered man um, because I feel that it's such deep programming that we have to uh, say men first and even for me someone who I feel I would view myself as a very empowered woman and very grounded in my self and my sexuality and who I am and still there's this deep programming that men come first to the point where I'm talking about a podcast about empowering women and the first thing that comes out of my mouth is empowered man so just really like this is the raw and real version of me and you are seeing me as I am still deprogramming myself along the way and I think it's really beautiful for us to allow ourselves to come into full integration of all of these parts of ourselves that we have you know, been programmed growing up and do we want to prefer them or not? And of course I love empowering men, but this podcast is about empowering women. (laughs) So really funny. I'm laughing at myself that that's what I said first. And if you're a man listening to this, like the way that you can, you can choose to change and, and empower the women in your life. Or if you're, if you are, um, resonating with more masculine energy, and you're choosing to support and to be with the feminine energy. I'm trying to say this as, as in like, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, but if you're resonating with more masculine energy and you're choosing that dynamic with the feminine energy, the way that you can support the feminine is to create a safe space for her to speak her desires and, and also for her to speak up when she doesn't feel safe and to create more safety for her and to celebrate having beautiful, juicy, yummy sex together and just like feel into your body more and just like love, love having sex. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to answer the, the questions that I always get. It's like, how do I get to where you are? Like, this is the question that so many people ask me is, I see that you're super sexually empowered. I see that you're just empowered in general as a human. And like, how did you get there? And I'm not saying that you're going to choose the path of like literally being the virgin or the whore, but you can choose to allow yourself to your psyche, your, your mental and like your physical mind, your conscious and your subconscious sides to really let this sink in and ask yourself, am I being affected by this programming? And if so, do I choose to prefer this anymore? Do I want to choose something else? So I will leave you with that. And I'm sending you so much love. Uh, We are just starting our journey to Europe soon. So we're in Samui now in a beautiful space. And I'm so excited to be in Europe and all the juicy stuff we're going to do this summer. So this is Brittany Bond sending you guys all lots of love.